Okay, so if you guys remember from last week, um, this was the repeat I made, and we tested it out, and it's in repeat. We threw on the numbers just so we could kind of see where the tile was visually, but if I got rid of the numbers, it would just be the flowers. Um, okay, so I'm going back to my original, my tile that's all in repeat now because I did the offset filter tool. So now I need to index my colors so I can do different colorways. How many colors do you guys think is in this print? The tricky part is that it's watercolor, and watercolor has such a gradation of, you know, mm -hmm. shades of yellow and shades of pink and orange. So really, it's like, I don't know, there's a million, a safe number to say. But there's, that's why it's so great in Photoshop, because it's all kinds of dots, pixels put together. But <clears throat> if we want to print this on our fabric, we got to nip this down to like 10 or less if possible. That's our goal. Um, so it's probably a lot. So you kind of want to plan ahead. Well, if I am going to limit it to 10, what should the 10 colors be? Probably, you know, three shades of red, three shades of orange. Kind of try to get a general idea before you get started. <clears throat> okay. Now what I usually do when I color index, I don't shoot for 10 right away. I'll shoot for a higher number and then I can go in myself and combine colors that I think should be combined instead of letting the computer do it automatically. So we demonstrate what I'm talking about. So let's follow our instructions. Let's see here. Um, number one, you have to have a flat layer. Do you know how to flatten your layer? Okay. Where are my layers? Yeah, definitely keep a copy. Oh yeah, so mine's already flattened, so I'm good there. It's a little bigger. Can't really see it. No, it doesn't want to make it bigger. <clears throat> I don't need that either. Okay. Um, let's move this so I can see the whole thing. Do I really need this? I don't think I need that. Okay. Um, okay. So flatten number one, check. It's already flattened, so don't worry about that. But you could go to layer, flatten image if you need to do that, or you could probably do it on your layers palette as well. Um, number one, there's a picture of what it looks like when it's not flat, what the, your layers look like, and then there's a picture of what it looks like when it's flat. Okay, next we do have to change our color mode. You go <clears throat> image, mode. Now mine index color is ready to go because I'm already in RGB, but if you were in CMYK, um, or maybe even a different one, this will be grayed out. So in order to get it not grayed out, go to RGB first, and then go back, and then you can hit index color. But the goal is to hit index colored. So since I'm already in RGB mode, I can skip number two and go straight to step number three, which says change image mode to index color. Dot, dot, dot. They are not done with us. Step number four. Um, okay, we have some information about what indexing coloring is that I got from Photoshop. There's palette choices, dither choices. Um, you know what, I honestly have found most my luck just kind of playing around with it, but for some people that like explanations, I got that from Photoshop's website if you want to read through it. Again, this is a few years ago, so I don't know if they've updated it, but um, okay. So I just play around with the choices. So it's gonna force it to be indexed. Right away, do you see a color change? I probably can't on the, that's a good thing about the projector, you can't really, <laughs> my screen, there's um, a lot less pink when I hit preview. There's a lot more, it's a lot brighter when I don't hit preview. Um, so this actually, it's not that bad, I just lose all of my pink. Um, so the palette, it's on local selective. Play around with the different palettes and you know, there's, I don't really have an answer of which one's best. I usually end up doing local selective, but it depends on your artwork. Sometimes some of the other ones just work better. Um, what, what, what do you, like you could do local percep perceptual. That? Those are indexing? They are palettes. So 
I knew somebody would ask this. And I actually don't know the answer. I'll be honest with you. I don't really know what they do. I just use them to get my thing. But I did go to Photoshop and there is an answer. So like the selective palette, it's optimized for web colors and colors that occur in large areas of flat color. So maybe that's why selective usually works for me because I do work on more flat kind of drawings. Um, perceptual palette, the one above it, that one considers the color spectrum where the human eye is most sensitive. So they have reasoning behind the palettes. I do not use photo, in fashion illustration, we don't use it like to a science level. We, you know, so in, in intro, intro to illustration, we're not really gonna dive deep in the meaning of each of these palettes, unfortunately. Um, we're just gonna kind of play around and see which one works the best. But you can read through what they all do, what the differences are. Again, I, I'm visual, a visual person, so for me, it's just easier clicking on them and looking. You know, hitting preview and unhitting preview. Does it, you know, is, is, it, is it choosing the colors I wanna keep? Okay, maybe I'll choose local perceptual this time. Now you can pick how many colors. My goal, I'm gonna try to shoot to get about 10 colors. I'm at 15. If I hit, let's try 30. If I hit 30 colors, now it matches my preview definitely a lot better than 15 did. Um, let's see, does it look different if I hit 15 again? Let me see. That's, is there a Yes, it does. So if you're gonna print it, you probably don't want more than 10 colors. So I think your goal for this class should be 10 colors or less. Less is always great too. Yeah, if you can get it down less than 10, that's good. But no more than 10, it's just too expensive at that point. Um, like I, when I worked in the industry, usually eight was the max, but I know they can do 10, yeah. Oh, if it's a digital print, you have digital print? Don't worry about it. Yeah, not a big deal. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Um, okay, so you kind of play around with it. I'll leave it here at 20 and I'll say okay. And then you can choose the dither because it'll have different textures sometimes the way it breaks it up. So again, it's hard to see on that big screen, I feel like. I don't know, I feel like you lose a lot of the detail. So you'll play around with it yourself on the computers and see which one you think looks the best. I'll say, okay. It's sort of the texture of how it breaks it up. The dots. Mm -hmm. yeah. The dots, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> now I can start doing, I'm gonna clean up my color index. So let me see, on the next page, number five. So I kind of just did five and six. So you can see, if you look at this in, here in color, let me pull it up in color. Da, 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 da. That's not it. Where is my blackboard? It was here a second ago. Hmm. Just had blackboard open. Is it for real? It's gone. Oh, here. Here it is. Okay. Let me clip this. Okay. Here's, um, this is what I demoed with last time I did this. Um, so here I chose local selective and I said eight colors. And oh, let's see the picture of my original artwork, no. This is really what my original artwork looked like. You see there's blue, yellow, white. So when I said eight colors, it almost looks like it's grayscale. Look at not good. So then I went back and I was like, oh, let's try 15 colors. <laughs> okay, that looks better. Um, and I said, okay. Then I, I'm gonna go to mode, index, or I'm gonna go to color table. And I'm gonna look at this. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There's my 15 colors that I chose up here. And when I look at these two, I'm like, you know what? Let's just make that white. So I can combine those two. These, let's combine these and make them light gray. You get to be medium gray. You can be black or dark gray. Oh, here, this will be dark gray. That'll be black. And this could be another shade of gray. And then we'll leave blue and yellow. So you can manually combine your colors yourself. Sometimes you do a better job of that than clearly 
the computer automatically because this is what they did. They got rid of yellow and blue. No, you should get rid of some of the grays. So, um, so that's kind of your next step. How to do that? You will pick this guy and it'll take you to the color palette. Copy that. Go back to your color palette, click this one, and hit paste. And you keep doing that. So let's demo that on the one I have. You have to put both of them. Mm -hmm. You have to open up both their color windows and make sure they have the same color. Oh, so you have to do each one just with the same image. Sure, yeah. So if we do image mode color table. Okay, so these are my choices. So here's light blue. Where is light blue? What's going on? So sometimes when I see a color like that, I'm going to click light blue. I'm going to make it something obnoxious so it's easy to see, like maybe like hot pink or, I don't know, or maybe even dark blue. Okay. Okay. I don't even see it. So it's, I could zoom in and look for it, but you know what? Maybe I just change it to white and get rid of it. That can be a background color. Who needs him? Same thing with this one. Make that F, 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 F. And this guy too. So look at that. I'm already getting rid of colors myself. Easy. Okay. So this guy is FBE1A4. I'm just going to copy it. Say okay. Um, maybe I want this one to also be the same color. So actually, I'm going to go back. Cancel. I'm going to click this one, my FBE1A4. I just want to see where it is. So I'm just going to pick an annoying color. There we go. Do you guys see where that is? That light yellow? Maybe this could also be the same color that's kind of next to it. Maybe. Okay, I'm going to go back and hit uh, Command V to paste it. So I'm back to my light yellow. I'll say, okay. Maybe this guy should also be that same one. Here, I'm going to pick an annoying color so I can see where it is. So. You know, it seems the way the colors are lined up there are from minimum to maximum amount. So it's going to be on the minimum end that you're probably doing most of it. I like that observation. Um, I can't confirm it because I've never um, personally observed it. I've never thought about it, to be honest with you. But I see you're saying this has the least amount of dots, and then maybe this is the background color. That's very logical, perhaps. Yeah, I don't know. Hope that's true, because then I'll learn something new. So that's good. Okay, so I, I think I, you know what? I, I don't think that these two colors are different enough. Um, so to save money, I'm just going to let them both be the same yellow. So now these two are actually the exact same color. Okay. Let's see here. What about this guy? Here. You know, maybe it's okay to have a co two shades of yellow, and that will add interest and depth to my art. So I'll leave this guy at FBD083. I'm not going to change it to the lighter yellow. Okay. So right now I have two colors. I got my white, I got light yellow, I got dark yellow. Okay, what is this? So maybe this could be one of my yellows, right? What do you think? Light yellow, dark yellow? What do you think that should be? Dark yellow? Okay. So I'll say cancel, and I'm going to go get that, my dark one. I'm going to hit Command-C to copy it. And I'm going to go, and I'm going to hit Command-V to paste. Okay. What's this guy? What is he doing? Ooh, what color should he be? Right now, he's like a real pale yellow. Should I just make him the light yellow? Or white? Yeah, let's see what color he is right here. Throw in white? Yeah, let's try that. Okay. Is that kind of distressed spotty though? What color is this? I'm going to copy my light yellow and see what it looks like. Well, you're striving for 10 in the end and you're not yeah. going through and right now you're on about 3? Or less. Like, why not have less? Yeah, less is always, it doesn't have to be 10 exactly. That's just an arbitrary number I threw out. Um, but, yeah, not more than 10. I, I would be worried if there's more than 10 colors. It'll be harder to print and much more expensive. Probably won't be worth it. Yeah, 8 is what we usually try. I've had seen prints that have actually printed with 12. Mm -hmm. They're printed out of Japan, and they have, like, these, it's more expensive, these board shorts. Um, but, yeah, 8's a good goal, actually. 
Um, okay. But since it's your first time doing this, I'm like, 10 might be easier. Give you guys a couple extra colors, but yeah. Honestly, if you can do five, do five. <laughs> it's okay too, if it looks good. Okay, so now we also have a peach color. What is this peach color? Let's see what it is. Oh yeah, I think that's an important color. Let's keep this light peach, right? So going back to current, I'm gonna copy it. I bet I can probably spread around this light peach color. What is this thing, Bobber? Let's look at him. Okay, see that guy? Let's go back to current. Well, what should I make him? Should I make him the peach? Or a light yellow? Don't all answer at once. <laughs> All right, I'm doing peach. <laughs> this is where if you are really into like colors and design, you can get really wrapped up into this because it is important decisions. Okay, let's try this one. I'm going to do light peach again. Okay. Okay, cool. It's already losing something. Yeah, you're right. It is losing. So maybe I'm going too fast, Cindy. Honestly, I'm doing this demo and people are falling asleep. So now I'm like... <laughs> Now I'm like just picking colors to pick them and now I'm losing my quality of art. So I'm glad you noticed losing the quality. I should spend more time and be more thoughtful about what colors I choose, shouldn't I? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm not gonna do the rest for you. I think you all can figure it out. I'm just gonna say, okay, right now. Now, what I've also done, let me see if it's on your instructions. Okay, it's not. So. If you guys want your table to be really clean, I do believe if you go file, or sorry, image mode and go back to RGB, and then go image mode index color, like it went down to 13 automatically. So it combined them for me. So that way my table's a little bit cleaner if you don't want. So that way later when you go do your other two colorways that you're gonna do, you don't have to copy in your shade of white in five different boxes. So that's kind of nice. Yeah. Let's see. Who can answer that question? How did I merge my uh, color table? So say it again. You said image. Image mode RGB. And then it came up. And I can just say okay. Now let's go like image mode color table. I have much less. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That will do it. <clears throat> and then you guys have to figure out, hopefully by now, once you do have your color the way you like it, you're able to save your swatch so that you can open it in Illustrator and drop it in your swatch palette in Illustrator. And it will be a nice little repeat tile. Right? Yeah. So anyone, how do you guys do that? Do you guys know how to do that? Let's, let's see. How do, a PSD file? Save it as a what? Save as Henry says. Yeah, I think I would say I would I would save it as like a PNG or like a JPEG just because Illustrator files get so big. And I know you know what I'm talking about, Laura. Yeah. <laughs> and they have to wait forever. So it's smarter. Keep your Photoshop file. Don't ever lose that. That's your true artwork that you would send to the factory. But I think for CAD purposes, it's smarter to save it as a PGN. Uh, PNG, sorry, I can't talk. So just remember where you saved it. Watercolor flower. I'll hit save. Oh, wait, let me do this. Maybe this will be our white ground. Hit save. And then I'm going to go to and open it in Illustrator. Yay, there it is. It's not open anymore, what are you talking about? There it is. Um, you know, and once it's in Illustrator, it doesn't have to be art to scale or, you know, really large. You can um, make it smaller. And then click drag drop to swatches. Now it has this X. It means it's a linked file. What does that mean if it's a linked file? Why do we care about that? Yeah. 
So it's just connecting to that file extension that's saved in my downloads. It didn't copy it into Illustrator. So a pro is that my Illustrator file is not huge memory right now, so it's easier to work in. That's a great pro. Con is if I email it to my instructor or somebody for a job interview, that person's going to open up the file and wherever it has a box, it's just going to be white space for them. <coughs> so that's not good. So if you want to embed it, you just click embed. And um, now it's actually in your file. So now my file's bigger because it's saving that JPEG, but at least if I email it somewhere, the, I know the person will get it. So you ever see that X? Buyer beware, beware, beware. I always feel bad for students that go open their file, even on a different computer. You go to a different computer, it doesn't open and they lose all their work. They're like, no. So anyways, click, drag, drop to swatches. There it is, let's see if it works. Yay, colorway number one done. Cool. So I do two more colorways, I put them in my CADs, draw the backside of my CAD as well, have a nice header, save it, turn it in, and you are done with this class. Yay, exciting, right? Questions? Yes. Yes, okay, so the people who did come in a little bit late, just so you know, we are taking a final exam. Does anyone know what time the final is at? 1 p.m., that's correct. Who would ever come late to a final? Does anyone know anyone that would ever do that? You would think no one's off. Yes. <laughs> so I will still let you take the final if you're late. However, I'm going to drop it one letter grade. Okay. So how late can you be? If you are 15 minutes late, you lose a letter grade. If you come in 14 minutes, 30 seconds, lucky you. But 15 minutes, you're it's dropping a grade. So finals at 1 o'clock. Um, you have the rest of class time to finish this. But be careful because I'm not going to accept any work after 3.40 p.m. So you have till 3.40. I am here at 8 in the morning, 8 to 10. Office hour, if you need those extra hours as well. All right, any other questions? Okay, so I'm going to conclude this video.